Alright, green. Good evening, sports fans. Welcome to League One Season 15. It's week four. And a user-user matchup, the Appalachian State Mountaineers head north to the Carrier Dome to take on the number two ranked Syracuse Orange. Both teams undefeated at 3-0. and Two undefeated teams are going to enter the Carrier Dome tonight. Only one of them will leave with that record still intact. Appalachian State number one in the country in points, 64 a game. Syracuse number nine. Number seven in yards per game and number seven in passing yards per game are the Mountaineers. 11 and 23 and 41 in yards, pass, and rush are the Orange. However, the Mountaineers also 40, giving up 41 points per game. We're indoors today at the Carrier Dome, and we're looking forward to bringing you a great match. One of the most storied legacies in the history of college football. I started my coaching career, I had a dream. And every decision that I made, that I will be All right, the head well, football coach at Syracuse University. Let's try that again real quick. Good evening, Cadrian. 1959 National Champions. Syracuse has scored an undefeated season, and the team carries Ben Schwartzwalder off the field. It's going to be the greatest victory that you kids have ever had. Dozens of the most prolific and impactful players in the game. The first African American to win the Heisman Trophy. Six members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 53 All-America selections. We need to make this place the hardest place to play in the country. We need you. We need everyone. This is our state, our town, our team, and we got to win. Now, go Orange! Spanning more than 10 successful seasons and covering the country from California, Ohio, North Carolina, and Virginia, this is League One NCAA football. Don't you let anyone steal history away from you. Since 1889, this is Syracuse football. All right, taking another run at this here. The 99 overall versus the 90 overall. Uh, if by taken you mean are they being played by a user, the answer is yes. Yes, they are. Number of important early visits this week for the Orange. Tanovasa, Mo Neal, and Anoisi. Top players for the Orange, Jordan T 
Han Yi and Martin for the Mountaineers. Dome Stadium in New England. It's the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. Last year's Sun Belt champions versus last year's national champions. The pregame festivities are over and we're just about set to get the game underway. And Hoff Richter kicks it off. Deep, deep in the end zone. Mountaineers will take the knee to begin the first possession of this game. And a fantastic leaping catch there by James Moore. Tight end to get a nine yard gain. Second and short here for Dusty Cobbs and the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Clock winds down and there's a lot of density, but it's a pass outside and Hudson's following him and he breaks the tackle and it's a touchdown saving tackle after a 64 yard gain to the tight end. It's now second and goal from the two as the Mountaineers hurry up. And Derek Willis, the halfback, loses two yards. The Orange have been looking for that for the last few plays. Two tight ends on the left against a 3-3-5 defense here. And the defender comes through for an eight yard sack to make it third and goal from the 12. In response to third and 12, we're going to see five wide from the Mountaineers. And Champ Bailey gets a hand in and deflects it. That's the first incompletion of the game for Dusty Cobbs. 
and it makes it fourth and goal from the 12. And we will see the Mountaineer field goal unit. This isn't much more than an extra point. This is to try to put his team up by a field goal. It's up and it is good. The field goal is good, but after that big 64-yard passing play on which multiple tackles were broken, that is a four-point swing, I think, in the Orange's favor. They'll take that as a good win. And the Mountaineers put it through the end zone. So Syracuse will begin on their 25. Five wide receivers versus a dime. Neal coming across in the slot gets two yards and is squashed between two zone defenders waiting for him. They're all over him by the time he caught the ball. Mo Neal out of the backfield dodges around a defender. Changes a three yard gain to a six yard gain. It's now third and short. And Tanuvasa throws it into triple coverage, and it's snatched away. And that's a pick. First turnover of the game. Excellent field position for the Mountaineers. And Entrell Roll gets his hands on it as the orange, but he can't hold on, so that's a deflection, but a good heads-up play to jump the route by Entrell Roll. And up to the single back. Willis gets a three yard gain to make it third and seven. Five wide receivers on third and seven. And Marquez Warren with a miracle 14-yard reception. You look at that throw and you think, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You're throwing that into coverage. But only he knows the confidence that he has in his wide receiver to have the ability to come down with the football 
for that first down. That's big time there between the quarterback and the wide receiver. First and 10. Ball on the 16-yard line. And audible into the five wide. And a big sack. Loss of seven for Cox. And Ben Jordan, with a blown coverage, gets the touchdown. And after the turnover, it's Appalachian State by 10. And deep in the end zone. Allworth gets around the outside and is just short of the 30. First and 10 now on their own 27. 2.35 to go. In the first, down by 10. Tanuvasa with the scramble, dodging some defense, breaking a tackle and getting 16 yards. Heads up play to scramble. Usually, you can't get a scramble right up the, right up the gut, but that's what Tanuvasa saw and took on that play. Excuse me. Now just eight yards shy of enemy territory. From their own 42 yard line. First down. Shotgun ace here, two tight ends, Lofton motion from left to right. And Tanuvasa is just decked immediately after the after not making the uh, the read on the read option. Defense was through the gap and into his face very quickly. Mo Neal comes out of the backfield and gets six to take out about half the distance. It's now third and eight. Tanuvasa out of the pocket, on the run, throws to Custis. Two defenders leap. And that's a big play by Custis and some blown defensive calls that uh, result in the big touchdown for the Orange. They're going to bring it within three. 
And taking the knee, Appalachian State started on their own 25 yard line ahead by three. Not sure that touchdown and their last possessions given them some confidence, but let's see if that carries them back down the field. As long as this quarterback has time to throw, then you can guarantee that he'll find the open man. Entrell roll with another deflection. Heads up play as the receiver was on the other side of the defense. and Would have been very f hard to catch there if the pass had not been tipped. And this time, Cobbs throws just into space. It's now third and ten. Play by Foster, comes in just at the right time, puts his hand up and comes down with the ball. It's now Syracuse with a pick and excellent field position on the opponent's 32. Handoff is to Mo Neal. He gets three yards before he's tackled from behind. Twenty-nine yard line and the orange are in the shotgun split big. Tanuvasa scrambling, didn't like his look, dodges some defenders, breaks some tackles, gets a fantastic 18 yard rush, breaking outside and then heading up the seam. It's now first and ten from the eleven. O'Neal out of the backfield. He gets three yards, and then a defender is waiting for him and can't get around him, but it's a good gain on first down. Second and seven, and in under ten seconds, it doesn't look like the Orange are going to try and get a playoff before the quarter ends. Second 
And we'll head into the second frame. Mountaineers with a three-point lead, but Syracuse with the momentum after a pick are at second and seven on the Mountaineers' nine-yard line. Hand off to Neal. He goes up the gut and has a huge running lane. For the touchdown. And three seconds into the second quarter, it's now Syracuse lead for the first time this game. Hoffrichter puts it right in the R in Syracuse. And it's taken out, and Hoffrichter closes in with the tackle, stopping him at about the 25-yard line. Refs call it the 24. Excellent form there on the tackle by Hoffrichter. The, uh, the special teams training staff of the Syracuse Orange known for actually making the kickers practice tackling. Not something you see in every program. Defense at the feet of the quarterback, but he gets the ball off to Cook, who gets a 10-yard gain. Tight end and half back on the right as the team's on the left hash. And this time, Ben Jordan has an 18-yard catch and is tackled immediately by Entrell Roll. Just into Orange territory are the Mountaineers. They throw it up, and Derek Thomas this time with the deflection. I think that might be the fourth total deflection for the game. Maybe five for the Orange. Good heads-up play. Keeps it to second and ten. Hand off to Willis, who gets tackled from behind after a four-yard gain. It's now third and six. Now, 
they need to get it down to the 37. They come out on an empty, empty set here. And it's a four-yard reception for battle, but he needed seven. So they call it fourth and three. On the 40-yard line, this is no man's land. We'll see how aggressive the Mountaineers want to be, but they only have so many fourth downs to go for in the season. As you are limited to 12 in the regular season per league rules. He looks like he's going to send the field goal unit out for a long field goal. They'll call on the field goal unit. It's up. It's up. Looks long enough. And, he splits. and that is a fantastic 50-yard field goal. 57-yard field goal to put three points on the board. It is a one-point game with 5.33 to go in the second. That is a fantastic field goal. And another demonstration of the power of that leg puts it right through the uprights. Um, a sound effect, Leon? No, we do not have a sound effect for uh, uh, extra long field goals, as you could, you might have seen. Um, you do get coaching XP when you get a field goal longer than 45 yards. Uh, the other effect of that, really, is that that kicker is going to be heated up. And Metcalf, out of the backfield, gets a 12-yard reception. The middle of the field was wide open there. Come to think of it, that kind of field goal also probably does affect momentum in the game as well. First and ten. Ball on the 37. So we see a shotgun normal halfback week here from the orange. Handoff is to Neal. He has a great gap, gets into the second layer, has a 13-yard rush. Fantastic vision to keep going. Could have cut up to an earlier gap, but might not have gotten all 13 of it. Went to the far side of his offensive line and got a couple extra. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 50-yard line. Mo Neal reaches behind him to get the ball that was trailing him. Turns it into a two-yard gain. Tanuvasa audibling, and he throws to Lofton, who gets six yards to make it third and short. Tanuvasa scrambling out to the right, throwing on the run. Two yards 
to go. And Bavaro, the, the tight end, coming from the left side to the right. It was a long run there. Waiting on the pocket was Tanu Vasa, and when he broke into freedom, he made the pass. I did not know that was out, Leon. Thank you for informing me, and I will check it out later. Thirty two yards from the end zone, three fourteen and three timeouts. It's first and ten. Ball in the thirty two. And a handoff to Neal. And great push there by the offensive line. Just motors the defensive front backwards, giving all the space for the eight yard gain on the run. Make it second and two. Every coach's favorite down and distance. Shotgun split here. And the handoff is to Metcalf, and there's a wide open gap, and he breaks it right out into the flat for a nine yard gain. The, the safety has to come down to stop the run from breaking outside. It's now first and 10 on the 15 yard line. 220 with a live clock. Shotgun normal, halfback weak. Mo Neal with another handoff and another wide open running lane. That's a 10 yard gain. It's going to be first and goal now from the five. Sorry, make that the four. Heavy formation here for the Orange. Some audibles under center by Tanuvasa. And it's a handoff to Tyrell Richards, senior fullback. He gets a one yard gain. Second and goal now from the three. Seeing a split again against a four-man front here for the Mountaineers. We are under a minute. Handoff is to Metcalf. And he has a wide open lane to get it into the end zone. Hoffrichter is going to come on to the field to make this an eight-point game.
Hoffrichter kicking off. And it's going to be Mountaineer ball. They'll have 52 seconds, three timeouts, and they'll start on their own 25-yard line. Mountaineers with a nine yard pass. It costs them a timeout. They are now on the 34. Quarterback hit as he throws, but he gets it to Ben Jordan for six. That's a first down, stopping the clock momentarily. We now see a hurry up here from the Mountaineers. And that's a big sack. 11 yards and the orange don't waste any time calling the timeout. Thirty seven seconds, second and twenty one. Ben Jordan with a ten yard catch. And Appalachian State spends a second timeout. It's third and long. A massive 23 yard pass to Charles Cook puts the Mountaineers in enemy territory. And they hurry up. But Audible's at the line. I mean, the clock will go live. And another 15 yard catch for Ben Jordan. And more no huddle. 21 seconds. Out of the pocket. And this time to Marquise Warren for 14 yards. It's now first and goal with 14 seconds remaining. And flush from the pocket again. This time, Hudson. Hudson with the points saving interception. A huge play in the red zone.
It's halftime, and we've got a close one. 21-30. A quick look at our halftime stats here. The score is 21 to 13. First downs are in Appalachian State's favor, 8 to 7. And there's only a 11-yard difference in total offense, and that is also in the favor of Appalachian State. However, on six runs, Appalachian State is minus 21, in large part due to the negative from getting sacked a few times. On the other hand, the Orange are 12 for 85 and two touchdowns. Through the air... Appalachian State is 13 for 20 and a touchdown for 220 yards, whereas Syracuse is 9 for 10 and one touchdown for 103. Neither team perfect on third down, 2 for 5 for the Mountaineers and 2 for 3 for the Orange. And we also have three turnovers in the game. That's one interception thrown by Tommy Tanuasa and two thrown by um, above, 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 the, the, the Mountaineers. Time of possession is just about even at seven and a half to eight and a half minutes. Looking at player stats here, Tommy Tanuvasta is nine for 10, 103 yards, one touchdown, one interception. His, his only incompletion of the game is that interception. That's a 90% completion rate and an overall QB rating of 189. Dusty Cobbs is 13 for 20 for 220. It's one touchdown and two interceptions. 65%. That's a 153.9 rating. He has been sacked three times. So no intentional rushing attempts uh, by Cobbs there. He's scrambled out of the pocket a number of times, but he's either been sacked or he's thrown it away. It's a loss of 26 on three sacks. Willis is three for five. Um, having a long of four, it means the other two were not great. But not a whole lot of running to Willis so far this game. Syracuse, on the other hand, on the ground is Mo Neal, has five attempts for 43 yards. Tanuvasa has four attempts for 29 yards, largely out of the scramble as the read option has been well covered. Metcalf is two for 12, and Tyrell Richards, the fullback, uh, got one in a goal line set. Receiving, Mo Neal also leads the receptions for the Orange. He has five catches for 19 yards. Metcalf, Bavaro, and Lofton each have one catch for 12, 10, and 6, respectively. And Jamal Custis has one catch for 56 yards and a touchdown after a couple of blown tackles on that play allowed it to be extended. Appalachian State... Ben Jordan leads the way with six catches for 136 yards and a touchdown. Warren is two for 28. Battle is two for 13. Cook is two for 39. And Moore rounds it out with one for nine. Defensively, it is the strong safety, Marcus McCoy, who leads the way for the Mountaineers. Four tackles, two of them for loss. Sanders and Ray, corner and middle linebacker, round that out. And Demary Brewer, the right outside linebacker, is the sole interception for the Mountaineers. Defensively for the Orange, Troy Henderson Jr., the stalwart captain of the defense, 94 overall middle linebacker 
has three tackles. Roll and Hudson have two. Roll uh, Hudson with a pick. Tackles for loss are by mainly green and black. And one pick for the senior strong safety, Evan Foster. And then that's your stats at halftime. We will resume shortly. Second half action about to begin. All O'Neal gets the give on the read option and with a crashing wave of offensive line moving the entire defensive shore to the left, he cuts right and goes all the way around it for a great gain for 10 yards and first down. From first down, it's Mo Neal again with another great running lane. Back to back first downs on the ground, on first down, on the back of Mr. Mo Neal. First and ten now, two yards shy of Mountaineer territory. And yes, friends, if you're keeping score at home, Mountaineer territory would most likely be mountains. First and ten, ball on the 48. We have a shotgun split big. Tanuvasa in the pocket, doesn't like it, scrambles out and slides for first down after scrambling out. Heads up slide right into the feet of the second baseman. Another handoff to Neal, another big run. This might go, yes, looks like all the way. And with the extra point, that's a 15-point margin now. It's not quite a three-score game. Nice kick, plenty of 
Hoffrichter puts it right in the middle of the letters and gets taken out of the end zone and stopped short at the 14-yard line. Excellent coverage on the kick return there with an excellent single-man open field tackle. There's gotta be some sense of 6.25 now to go in the third. Appalachian State down by 15. And he breaks a tackle. And that's a touchdown saving tackle there by the safety Hudson coming in and stopping it just shy of the midfield stripe. First and ten now, three yards shy of enemy territory, and it's a audible at the line of scrimmage. And Henderson Jr. with a huge pick. That was a fantastic play to come from behind the receiver to just in front of him at just the right time. Excellent field position once again for the Orange. And handoff to Neal. Goes for six. That's a great gain on the ground on first down. I don't know. Any coach is going to say no to six yards on the ground on first down. Second down now, and they need about four yards to pick up the first. Lofton coming from right to left. They call it a two yard gain, I guess, because they had to come back for the ball. It's now third and two. Let's see how mean their two is, because that really looked a lot closer than third and two to me. It's third down, and they're about two yards shy of the sticks. Hand off to Neal, and looked like a linebacker was looping in and met, you know, was, uh, it was, uh, you know, just, uh, so, you know, at the same level. Um, and if it had been, you know, if, it, if, if his intercept had been uh, on, uh, lined up in the right place. Yeah, he, he would have hit him and decked him and stopped him short, but just outside and missed him. Mo Neal with the first down. It's now on the 33. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 33. Right 
Now this time Tanuvasa keeps it and Mo Neal comes around and run blocks for him. Puts the defender off of his step and gets uh, Tanuvasa an extra four yards thanks to downfield blocking by Mo Neal who was the read man on that play. Smart player, Mo Neal, fifth-year senior, starting for the past... Sorry, this is, this is his third season as a start, I should say. Metcalf gets the ball this time. And with a broken tackle, he's just going to motor his way all the way to the end zone. Heavy power running there, up the gut for Eric Metcalf. Ranger became the mighty Battle Cat, and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. And State takes the knee. They'll begin on the 25, 328. In the third. They're down by 22. Which is, if you're counting at home, possible to do with three touchdowns, including one two-point conversion. And the defender, number 29, hangs on to the receiver and causes the ball to be dropped. Looked like a flag that wanted to fly away in the wind there, but held on and caused, uh, caused the defender to lose his grip on the ball. Sorry, the receiver to lose his grip on the ball, I should say. Five wide receivers. And we see a scramble. And he's pushed out of bounds. Scrambling out, but no gain on the play. It's now third and ten. And another fantastic into a tiny window pass for the Mountaineers as they hurry up, having an escape to third and a mile. And that's a 13-yard loss on a first down sack as Green comes through the line and forces Dusty Cobbs to keep retreating, never finds his footing, and is taken down by the linebacker. He scrambled. Slings it. 
He's tackled at about the 43 yard line. Besides going deep on the field. And Barron with a huge play there to get all of that back and more. Get the first down. It'll be a new set of downs every time. With linebackers playing coverage, Cobbs had all the time in the world to wait and threw into the, a tiny window, but got it. And this time, Jordan gets four yards on the first down catch. From the 39-yard line, it's second down. Scramble out to the right this time. And has a battle in the open space for the first down. Battle has to leap to get it. As Cobbs had to throw on the run. And another quick pass to 84 gets first and goal. We continue to see hurry up. And this time the pass just goes into the grass. Stops the clock on the incompletion, though. Gives everybody a little bit of time to rest. And it's a gain, but it's short of the touchdown line. It's going to be third and goal from the one and a half. Five wide receivers, but a goal line here looks like from the defense. And we do see an audible from the offense. Bring people inside. And it stopped short. With a play clock longer than the clock of the quarter, we'll see if it uh, looks like the Mountaineers probably aren't going to be trying to get the playoff before the quarter changes. Fourth and goal from the one. Appalachian State is going to use one of its 12. Fourth down attempts. And that looked like a QB sneak there, and it didn't look like it was going, and then it slipped around for the points.
Appalachian State is going to put a team on the field, try and go for two points. And it doesn't go as the defender gets a deflection in. Deep in the end zone, Schumacher waves goodbye to it. Once again, the Orange are going to begin on their 25-yard line. Seven minutes, 59 seconds to go in the game. Orange are ahead by 14. 16, I'm sorry, 16. Tanu Vasa leaves the pocket, decides to go for it himself. Great downfield blocking, although there's going to be a flag on the play. They say it was just about where the play stopped, so no real change. Oh, sorry, no change. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I mean, it's because it's first and 10 from the 25. It's back where they started from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another shotgun split here. This time, the handoff to Metcalf goes up the middle, and it gets a two-yard gain. Hand off to Neal, and he gets uh, six and makes it third and two. call a quarterback run on third and two and they get most of it but not all of it it's fourth and inches now we'll see what the orange want to do here whether they or not they want to spend a fourth down of their own Tanuvasa comes out onto the field and they go for it. And they call Richards short. That gives the ball back to Appalachian State 
on the orange 35 yard line. A huge defensive stop there. Last drive ended with as good a result as you can hope for, and I'm sure they'd like to replicate that here. And the defender gets a hand on it again. It's now second and ten. Five and a half minutes remain in the game. Five yards on second down, make it third and manageable. After the catch to battle. Catch by battle. And Foster with his second pick of the game. That's four interceptions by the Syracuse defense. And that's a big escape after giving up the ball on downs, attempting to go for it on fourth in their own 35. Neal gets caught in the backfield, loses one on the attempted run there. Second and 11 now from their own 24 yard line. We've got a second and 11. Ball on 24. Here we go, here we go, here we go. waiting in the pocket. Bavaro with a step on the defender gets three yards but is tackled. Sorry, call that four yards because it was third, second and 11. Third and seven now. Tinuvasa out of the pocket. Crux it deep. 
and the defender gets in and gets a hand on it but can't come down with the ball. It's now fourth and seven after the big pass attempt by the Orange. And they send a leg out onto the field, but it's not Harfrichter, it doesn't look like. It's Knight. Knight is waiting, waiting for, for the punt. And it's a low punt, and he catches up to it just in time. Has an excellent return. It's about the 42. Here's a step in the maturation of a young quarterback. How does he respond to throwing an interception on that last drive? Giving the ball away can rattle his confidence, but he just needs to relax and not try to force it. He's starting off in great field position now. And another close deflection. Tight coverage by the defense on the fast pass. Four, four man scrum there as uh, there's a big jump ball and nobody comes down with it. And it's caught, but short. It's fourth and two now. And we see a field goal unit. They've made a longer field goal already this game. It's up, but it's wide right. It's now Syracuse ball. There's 2.25 remaining in the game. Both teams with a full slot of timeouts. Tanu Vasa takes the ball. He gets outside, and he's pushed out of bounds after a 10-yard gain. But with more than two minutes, that clock will be live shortly. Tanuvasa again keeps it. Again, he's running into space. 
Lots and lots and lots of space. And he brings it all the way for the touchdown. Hoffrichter once again on the kickoff. He really got a hold of that kick. Shallow in the end zone this time, and Appalachian State elects to take it out. He's to the 20. And they get to about the 24-yard line. One forty six remaining in the game. Both sides have made their way back out, and we're just about set to get going. Up again. by twenty three. Just under two to go. Or down by twenty three, depending on your perspective. And flushed from the pocket to the right. He tries to get around the defense and he doesn't, and he's tackled in bounds. The clock will stay live. 31-yard line, second and four. Appalachian State not spending a timeout. So it's second down now. They need about four yards to pick up the first. Second and four. Handoff is to Willis. He breaks a couple of tackles. Breaks more than a couple, and he gets across the marker for first down. There's 101 remaining in the game. Hurry up here from the Mountaineers. An audible and a live clock. Scrambling out. And the ball is caught in bounds. More hurry up. Now that the Mountaineers are in orange territory. And a big go for Willis. Gets 10 yards. Audibles at the line of scrimmage, man in motion as the clock ticks down. Flushed from the pocket, hit as he throws, but it's a good pass and he's tackled and looks like out of bounds. And Willis this time is tackled for a loss in the backfield. Less than 20 seconds, and a few seconds tick off that clock before Appalachian State calls their first time out of the half. Second and goal now from the seven. And another red zone interception. That's five for the game.
And with 13 seconds on the clock, the Orange are going to send Rex Culpepper out onto the field to take the knee. Okay. Uh, give this a second. See what happens here. Potential technical issues. All right, but thank you for joining us. You've watched a good game as the Orange had to come from 10 behind and claw their way back into this after giving up an early pick. They then got five of their own, and that was really the story of the rest of the game. Unfortunately, no end of game stats here for you as we've had some technical difficulties, but uh, the game's in the books and we're going to switch over and resume shortly with uh, my Navy midshipman at the Marshall Thundering Hurt. Stick around.
Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another exciting evening of League One action. If you are with us for the first game, it saw Syracuse emerge victorious over another user coaching App State, a very good App State team who, who's had a few seasons under their belt recruiting. And uh, the Orange able to emerge victorious, 42-19. to And now we will move on to the second game of our doubleheader. We've got Coach Ninja and his beloved Navy midshipmen traveling to Huntington, West Virginia, to the only stadium in America named after a woman, Joan C. Edwards Stadium, in the heart of coal country, the thundering herd so named for all of the locomotives running through the area uh, and uh, carrying all that coal out of town. The number one D-tackle for the herd going to be out for the game. It's going to be a hit to their defensive line. And we'll take a look here real quick. See a good quarterback there, Green. And uh, Watkins, he's the best one, but he's only a 69. Looks like there's going to be a strong safety potentially playing on the D-line at only 219 pounds. He could get pushed around with that 56 strength. Decent right end, decent left end. And Hollis, you see, throughout the depth chart as a common backup. Uh, if they go with four linebackers, he may not even be on the defensive line. But as of now, looking like looking for their first conference win, their first conference game here in American conference play. See a 90 overall versus an 86 in the matchup. Coach Ninja making his adjustments pre-game. Figuring out which playbooks he's going to run with. This will be a short flight from Annapolis to Huntington. Should just take about... Uh, Another 60 seconds or so for the plane to arrive at Chuck Yeager Airport. You see Navy coming in with the 22nd ranked scoring offense and the top ranked rushing defense. Meanwhile, the Herd have a decent scoring offense of their own at 23rd, but not too much on the defensive side thus far, although they are 2-0. The kicker, Lefebvre, and Johnson and Green, the star players for the Herd, while Perry, Rawls, and Lee, the star players for Navy. There you see Watkins with his pulled hamstring. He'll be out for this game. And it's a night game here in Huntington at the Joan. Marco, the Buffalo, and the rest of the Thundering Herd await the midshipmen. Marshall, of course, the home of Chad Pennington, Byron Leftwich, and one Randy Moss. We're south of the mountain ranges in the flatter coal fields of southern West Virginia. And the coin toss goes Navy's way. They're going to elect a kick. Marshall will open with the football as we await the kickoff. Last second adjustments by Coach Ninja. And we are set to get underway here. 
Opening kick travels deep into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback, and Marshall will take over at their 25, led by quarterback Isaiah Green. Under 50% last game, but for 273 yards. It's going to be a three-wide receiver set for Marshall here on the opening play. Navy responds with a 4-3 under. Caught out in the flat by Brown. Eddie Brown picks up four yards on the first play of the ball game. Now going to be second and six with a moving clock. No huddle, go the herd. Caught by Johnson. He misses a couple of misses, a couple of missed tackles result in a long pass play on the second play of the game. Willie Johnson, wearing the selfish number, scores the opening touchdown for the Thundering Herd. It's going to be 6 0 awaiting the extra point. Kick is up and good, and it's 7 nothing. Marshall. Navy's going to get their opportunity here on offense. See an American Conference team, number 6 UCF, taking a loss to TCU. Check that. That's not an American Conference team. That's uh, in our dynasty. UCF, along with Houston, were moved into the Big 12 so that that conference would have a conference championship game. There is a big upset there by Kansas State. Monstrous win over number five, Oklahoma. Penn State leading Wisconsin in the second half. Colorado upsetting number seven, Michigan as well. So a few top 10 teams either in trouble or already having suffered so. Kickoff goes deep into the end zone. Going to be a touchback here, and the 25-yard line will be where the midshipmen start the ball game on offense. So here comes the offense taking the field for the first time today. Five receivers out in a spread set. Marshall responds with a dime formation. Caught by Perry, the back. Out there playing receiver on that particular play. He picks up six on first down. Now going to be second and four. From their own 31 yard line. Out of the huddle they come. Ball resting just across the 30 at about the 31. Twin tied in, set for the midshipman, three down, lineman for the herd. Up the gut goes Perry. He's got the first down and a couple of more. Picks up five yards on the play. It's going to be good for a Navy first down, and they will continue the drive. Tight set once again for the midshipman. The handoff to Perry up the gut. And he picks up two. Going to be second and eight now. With the ball at the 38-yard line. Shotgun wide trips. Navy back to pass. Looking. Goes over the middle to McKinley. He picks up two. Now going to be third down. Six yards to go. From their own 40-yard line. 
It's third down. They'll line up with five wide receivers. Five receivers out in a spread set once again for the midshipmen. Marshall responding with four down linemen this time. Caught on a leaping catch by Malcolm Perry. Jumps up, catches the ball, hangs onto it on the way down despite contact. And it's a first down for the midshipmen. The ball at the midfield stripe. First and ten. Ball on the 50. Right at the M. Twin tight end set for the midshipmen. Back to pass goes Reggie Hayes. Finds his man, catches it just past the defender. The defender closing quickly, but found himself a uh, half a step behind, but his shoulders were turned. And the amount of time it took him to turn around and cut, cut back into the backfield, the Navy receiver able to cut upfield and get a first down. Shotgun single back set against four down linemen. Handoff up the gut, and it's a big hole. Perry picks up the first down, and in quite a few more, it's a 16-yard gain before the safety able to close the gap. And now Navy with the football at the 23-yard line of the Thundering Herd. Driving, trailing by seven. First down, 10 to go. Ball at 23. Tight set once again for the midshipman. Man in motion. Finds Richards over the middle on the Z spot. Vince Richards picks up seven just before the defender gets to the quarterback. Now going to be second and short. Just three yards to go on the 17. Navy breaks the huddle. Comes out in a flex bone set. It's the triple option to the left side. Hayes pitches it back to Perry. Perry picks up a few extra. It's an 11 yard gain. Down inside the five. Going to be first and goal from about the four and a half yard line. They'll call it the five. It's a short five. We're just past the halfway mark in the opening frame. Eight-minute quarters here in League One. First and goal from the five. They're knocking on the door. Navy can see the end zone. Handoff up the gut to Green. And Green gets down to the one on a five-yard gain. Going to be second and goal from inches away. We're going to be inside the three-minute mark. Navy taking a look here at the strategy. Looks like Perry out of the game right now. No injury report, so he should be expected back shortly. The starting tailback for the midshipman. Missing on that last play. We've got second and goal. One yard to the goal line. About seven inches away from pay dirt. And Navy takes the seven inches up the middle. Good for six. The extra point will tie it.
kick goes deep into the end zone. Johnson takes the touchback, and the Thundering Herd will begin their second possession from their own 25-yard line. It is a final there on the crawler at the bottom. Colorado upsets number seven, Michigan. That's a top ten team going down to defeat this week. Marshall coming out in a spread set. They do have a back, a, 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 a tailback in the backfield. Pump fake by Green. Now going deep. Deflected at the last minute. Ryan Downs picks up his first deflection of the game. And it prevents a long bomb that would have put Marshall in the red zone. Instead, they remain on their own 33-yard line. Third and two here as Marshall breaks the huddle. Handoff up the gut. He's got the first down and more. And could have been a face mask, but there's no flag on the play. The referees missed it to Navy's benefit. Marshall stays with the no huddle, continues on offense. Over the middle they go to Mitchell. He's got the first down, 18-yard gain. Down inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Check that. They're going to mark it at the 35, 34 and a half. And the Thundering Herd now with a first down. Green back to pass and floats it to Mitchell. And he picks up just one. As the ball took its time getting there, allowing the defenders to close the distance. Second and nine now. Quarterback scramble, breaks the tackle, but not the second. And it's going to be a loss of two. They're going to credit Mike Parrish with the sack. Playing spy there in the defense, he closes the distance towards the sideline. And tackles him for a loss. Now third and long. Back to pass goes Green. And it's... A very, very safe play to Allen Smith. He only picks up two when they needed 11 or 10 and a half. They're going to call it fourth and nine on the 33. And Marshall trots out the special teams unit. Marshall could take the lead with this field goal. Kick is up. Looks like it's going to go wide left. It does. No points on the drive. Navy escapes, and we still have a tie ball game as the midshipmen will take over at their own 33-yard line. And we see this offense again after what you, Kirk, called a very physical touchdown drive. Well, I say that, Brad, because the big hog mollies up front were able to create... Flexbone here on first down. Hayes had some running room, but he got tripped up as the defender tackled the fullback on the fake run up the gut, and the tackle left a long roadblock that prevented Hayes from getting his momentum underneath him. That limits the play to just three. Now going to be second and seven at the 36. Single back set out of the shotgun. Four down linemen on defense. Great pressure on the Good pressure up the gut, and it causes the pass to flutter harmlessly to the turf. Now going to be third and seven. They come out in a five wide set. Spread set, five receivers out there for the midshipmen. Hayes drops back. 
Heavy pressure, and they're going to get to him. It's going to be a huge 17-yard loss. It's going to be fourth and a mile. As the Marshall defense played that one well, it looks like they might have been looking for that particular play. They had a lot of it covered. Good guess by the defensive coordinator on that third and long. It's going to result in a Navy punt to open the second quarter. And we welcome you back to the action here, and we have got a tight one going on in quarter number two. Rawls is waiting for the snap. Rawls back to punt. He gets off a boomer. And Obi Obialo is able to get underneath it and get forward just a little bit. A small seven-yard gain on the punt return finds Marshall with the football at their own 36. This is the point in the game where you no harm, no foul in field position for either team on that exchange. Looked like Brown was going to scramble, but Isaiah Brown on the run finds Eddie Brown for 18 yards to the left side. And once again, Marshall goes no huddle. Green off to a 7 for 8 start passing. Back to pass he goes, and over the middle again, this time to Johnson. Willie Johnson, he caught the touchdown pass. He catches 15 yards there. That brings him to two catches for 86 yards and one touchdown. Staying with the no huddle. Very aggressive offense by the Thundering Herd. Green shifts in the pocket and then throws to the right. It's the second time this drive he's moved around in the pocket and then thrown. A little bit antsy, but performing well on the run. Interception by Obenor. The first turnover of the game, and it's in the red zone, and it prevents a score. Norua Obenor picks up a huge turnover in Navy's favor. Ball inside their own 10-yard line as the midshipmen take over. They run the read option. The defense plays to the halfback. And Reggie Hayes, the beneficiary, picks up nine yards. That's going to be every coach's favorite down and distance. It's second and just one. Twin tight end set. Tight formation. Up the gut goes Perry. He's got the first down. It's going to be a fresh set of downs for the midshipmen as they escape the shadow of their own goalposts. First and ten. Ball on the twenty-yard line. Navy staying with the bunch set. Twin tight ends. I tight. Up the gut goes Perry. He picks up three. Going to be second and seven. Here in the early portion of the second quarter. Back to pass goes Hayes, finds Perry out of the backfield. He's just shy of the first down, going to be third and one. Third 
Hand off to Perry up the gut. He's got the first down. Going to be a fresh set of downs on a five-yard gain. Perry off to a hot start. Seven carries for 46 yards. Ball now at the 34. Play action pass and almost sacked, but Hayes able to get rid of the football. That's going to save about five yards. It's not going to be second and ten. Hayes back to pass, finds Henry in the flat. He picks up four, going to be third down and six to go. And so it's another third down upcoming here. Back to pass goes Perry, throws over to the middle, and he's going to be short. We'll see what Navy does here. Their defense having come up with a stop or two. However, the ball near midfield. An interesting decision for Navy. Looks like they are going to go for it. Looks like they've decided to go for Big play coming here from the midshipman. One of the 12 fourth downs. Coach Ninja is permitted to go for during the regular season. They're going to spend one here. Caught over the middle by Perry, and it's a good play on fourth down. It converts for eight, and a fourth down well spent. In League One, you are limited to 12 fourth down attempts over the course of the entire regular season. The coaches can choose when and where and what distance they go for them. It is completely up to the coach, but they do have 12 for all 12 regular season games. Well spent there. It converts, and Navy continues to march. Flexbone results in a four-yard gain. Going to be second and six as Navy gets across the M into Marshall territory. Having actually broadcasted for Marshall, I can tell you this tidbit. When there are disputes in the locker room, when there are arguments between players, they settle it on the M. The players are allowed to meet at the M after practice and settle their disputes. Up the gut goes Perry. He picks up two and a half. We'll call it three. Going to be third and four. Thirteenth play of the drive, and we're just past midfield. Navy facing a third and four. Five receivers back. Perry looking. Rolling to the right. Heavy pressure, and he's going to be sacked. It's going to be fourth and 18. Willing to bet that Navy won't go for this fourth down. However... Because he was tackled in bounds, that clock will move. And Navy's going to be able to take some time off the clock before they give the ball away. After the sack, it's now fourth and long. Rawls awaits the snap. Punt is high. We'll see where it goes out of bounds. He was able to deaden that kick perfectly. It's inside the 20. Long field to work with. We'll see. It's on the 19. And with 2.08, 
Marshall will have possession here in a 7-7 ball game. You always want to go in the locker room with momentum, so as we get closer to halftime, I think we'll see more and more attempts to create big plays. Green back to pass, looking to the right side, finds Brown. Brown doesn't quite get the first down, and that's going to cost Marshall a timeout. It's going to be second inches on their own 29. Hand off to Smith up the gut. A running play by Marshall gets 12 yards. And if you thought that their two-minute drill was going to be pass, 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 they took you by surprise there. Shotgun set. Halfback on the backfield. Out to the left side. And Brown is tackled inbounds, but it's good for the first that will momentarily stop the clock as they cross the midfield stripe. Green looking. Good pressure. He's forced to scramble. And they'll call it a positive gain of zero. Does not count as a sack, but it limits them to no gain on the play and keeps that clock rolling. Green back to pass. Looking in the shotgun set. Now scrambling. Defender is there. Tackles him. He rolls forward for an extra two. Now going to be third down for the midshipman defense. Shotgun set. Green looking. Going to scramble again. This time to the left side. He's got the first down. Breaks the tackle, but not the second. But he gets beyond the first down. And it's going to be a timeout by Marshall with exactly 60 seconds remaining. They have the ball at the Navy 36-yard line. Their kicker has already missed one field goal. First and ten, ball on the 36. Shotgun set again. Quarter defense for Navy. A sack this time. Green unable to get away. It's a big play. That is an eight-yard sack, and it's going to keep the clock moving, and it's going to push Marshall back to second and 18. They go no huddle. Green dropping back, looking. Scrambles once again. Breaks the tackle, but there's two or three defenders in the vicinity, and it's not enough. It only gets them one yard. Now it's third and a mile. Quickly, Green goes back to pass. Floats it. It spends so much time in the air that the Navy defender able to page through the final four chapters of A Song of Fire and Ice before leaping to make the interception. Navy now taking over at their 39 with 26 seconds and three timeouts. Hayes drops back and he's sacked. It's an eight-yard loss, and that might do it for the first half. We'll see, folks. Navy's not going to risk the momentum. The interception will give them an edge in the momentum meter. And despite taking the sack there, that only takes a small nibble out of that momentum. And Navy's going to go to the locker room ahead 7-7. Seven to seven. They will, of course, get the second half kickoff. So they'll start the ball. They'll start the second half with the ball and get that extra possession in the second half. We're going to take a five minute break here and be back for the second half in this tight ball game.
glad to have you with us in the studio for the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Chris Davis and David Pollock here completely locked in on that first half. What a terrific first half. This is everything we anticipated this game being. And we're going to be riveted to this game, I feel like, David, in the second half, anticipating a terrific finish. It's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's living up to the hype every single time. We can't even turn the channel here. We've got it on the big screen, on the big 60-inch. Yes, it's quite nice, by the way, too. The weather's nice and warm. It's beautiful. Got some chips. We're opening them up a little bit. But great game, living up to the hype. It definitely feels like both teams are evenly matched. It feels like it can go either way. It feels like it's going to come down to the wire. And the only thing I hope it doesn't come down to is a kicker. Please don't come down to a kick in the end. Both these teams playing great D, playing great O, you know, physical, you know, pounding on each other, making big plays. Don't come down to a finesse kick by like a, a soccer player, please. David's ready to get back on that couch, get the remote, get all the games dialed up to watch what's going on around the country. Time to get you back for your second half. Brad and Kirk, ready to roll.
We now open the second half with Navy receiving the football. Excellent. Deep into the end zone. They're going to start from their own 25. We will start the third quarter with Navy football. First and ten. The give to Perry up the gut picks up a solid five yards. Going to be second and approachable. Perry's averaging six yards a carry. He's got 54 on the ground so far. From their own 30-yard line, it's second down. Shotgun single back set, four down lineman. Back to pass goes Hayes. Throws to Lee. He breaks a tackle. They call it a fumble, but this broadcaster's guess is that a back counts for two feet. In other words, he very likely was down on the play. We'll see on the replay. Yes, it looks like his shoulder hit before the ball came loose. We'll wait to see if the CPU brings out the challenge unit. Otherwise, Navy may challenge it themselves. A lot of times you'll see teams start to clench up a little bit when games stay close well into the second half. You need to stay loose, keep doing what you've been doing all week in practice, and execute when it's time. His rear end hits, and then the ball comes loose. That should be reversed. It is indeed reversed. It remains Navy football. They say his knee was down. It was actually his gluteus maximus. 41-yard line is where the ball is. And Navy has first and ten. Hayes out in the flat to Perry. He picks up nine. It's going to be every coach's favorite down in distance. It's second and one. Short yardage situation here. It's second down and one. Out come the midshipmen in the flex bone formation. Triple option to the left side, and it it Hayes gets the pitch off. It's an excellent pitch by Hayes to get that ball out of traffic, out to Perry, and across the first down yard line. Fresh set of downs. Navy now into Marshall territory at the 47. From the 47 yard line, it's first down. Up the gut they go, and it's a good gain well past the first down. A 12-yard run by Wesley Green. The backup halfback position equal in rating between the second and third halfback. First and ten for the midshipmen. Ball resting at the 35-yard line of the thundering herd. Shotgun split big. Audibles at the line of scrimmage. And Hayes takes it up the gut. Good for six. Going to be second and four. 
Ball now at Marshall's 30-yard line. We're locked in a 7-7 ball game here in the third quarter, folks. Shotgun set. Shotgun normal halfback weak. Four down lineman for the Thundering Herd. Hayes breaks a quasi tackle. The defender had his back turned turned to him when it happened, but contact was made. Hayes runs forward for an extra 15, 17 yards before being pushed out of bounds. It's going to be first and goal for the midshipman at the one yard line. Coming out in the shotgun wide trips. Three down lineman for the herd. Approaching the midway point of the third quarter. This has been so far a promising drive for the midshipmen. Up the gut they go and he's tackled well short. It's going to be a loss of two. Looked like Marsha was ready up the middle. Ball now at the three-yard line, second and goal. It's a shotgun ace. Twin tight end set, single back in the backfield. They fake the handoff. Hayes keeps it, and he finds his way into the end zone as Navy takes the lead, 13-7, awaiting the extra point. Trainers taking a look at Malcolm Perry on the play, shaken up as Hayes waltzed into the end zone. Perry took the brunt of the Marshall defense. They were gunning for the middle of the field. Heavy contact there. Sees him questionable or probable status next week. Potentially a little bit longer, but certainly out for the duration of tonight. Points go up on the board, though, and Navy holds a seven-point lead here, almost exactly halfway through the third frame. I think the energy is there, Brad, but I think it really starts up front with their defensive line and their linebackers, the way they're being able to just win the battle at the line of scrimmage. I think it's giving them confidence, and it's allowing them to play more downhill where they can attack this offense. This deficit can be Marshall easy. taking over at their 25, trailing by a seven. Thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. Green gets rid of it in the left flat, and Cody Mitchell picks up 11. And now Green down on the field. Marshall's starting quarterback injured on the play. He so far is 12 out of 15, but with two picks. Morell, oddly enough, also an impact player. Mitchell, the tight end, they have a hard time bringing him down. He picks up an extra seven or eight after the catch. It's good for 20. That's his fourth catch for 50 yards. And Marshall now in Navy territory, led by the backup quarterback, an impact player. Morrill floats it, and a one-handed catch by Mitchell. Good for three yards. If it was a big play, that might be one to challenge, but a three-yard gain, not a good use of the coach's challenge as he was right on the sideline when he made that play. Up the gut to Smith. He rolls forward for an extra half yard, turns it into a five-yard gain. Now going to be third and two 
as the Thundering Herd continues with the no-huddle attack. Quickly they go, and to the right side, back to Mitchell. He picks up 14. It's going to be first, ta first down for Marshall at the 21 and a half yard line. And Garrett Morrill chucks it out of the back of the end zone. He was under good pressure by the Navy defense. Navy now checking the injury report for both teams. Green with a strained back is going to be out for the game. So Morrill is going to have to play the rest of this game for the Thundering Herd. Now facing second and 10 from the Navy 22-yard line. It's not often you see the backup quarterback also an impact player. We'll see how that affects Marshall's offense. Sack by the defensive end. Morrill takes a seven-yard loss. Not going to be third and long. play of this drive. Herbie, this guy headed to the locker room a little bit earlier with that injury. We don't know how bad it is, but right now it doesn't look like he's likely to play any more football. And he tackles him hard. The 37-yard line. Loss of eight yards on the play. Fourth down. the sack it's now fourth and long he gets it up and it's long enough the kick is no good. let's throw it out to Reese now for a studio update checking out the action in Cincinnati touchdown difference in this one Reese 14 7 So it's time to see this offense go to work again. This defense couldn't stop them from moving the ball and inevitably finding the end zone. Navy is up by a touchdown. Has some daylight. And he's tackled right around the 50. Game of 13 on the play. First down. First and ten. Ball on the 50. And he's taken down right around the 40. That's a game of 10 on the play. From the 40 yard line, first down. Tackle 
tackle made at the 32. Davis on the tackle at the 32-yard line. That makes it second and two. So it's second down and about two yards to go. They'll go with the flex bone set. 3-4 defense for the herd. Man in motion left to right. Hayes on the keeper. Tackled in the backfield. It's a loss of one. Going to be third down, three yards to go. Interesting down and distance. A lot of options there for Navy. They can go outside. They can go inside. They're at the 33. They might even be in field goal range now. They're going to spread them out, come out with five receivers. The halfback bright is one of them, and we're going to end the third quarter there. We go to the final frame, Navy ahead by seven. Navy coming out of the shotgun empty spread. They've got a halfback and a tight end out at receiver. Five receiver set. Over the middle to Bright, he's got the first down. Falls forward for an extra two. It's a good conversion for Navy. They continue to march. Pass to Green, good for another first down as Navy creeps inside the Marshall red zone. Ball now at the 16-yard line. First and 10 for the midshipmen, seven and a half to go. They're on the road here in the rolling hills of southern West Virginia, near the Ohio River. Just a few miles from Kentucky and a couple of blocks from Ohio. Ace set. Two tight ends. Navy lets the clock melt away. Bright goes up the gut, and he's tackled for a loss of one. Going to be second and 11. Looked like Marshall was ready for the run there. It's second and 11. Ball on the 17-yard line. They'll stay with the ace formation. Navy content to let the clock run. Hayes takes the snap. Drops straight back. And it's almost picked, but it's deflected by Jonathan Bailey. Just the third incompletion on the day for Reggie Hayes. Not going to be third and long. 11 yards to go from the 17, but Marshall, trailing by seven, needs to do more than to hold Navy to a field goal. They're in big trouble here. Navy already in scoring range. Shotgun set. Navy will look for an open man. If there isn't one, they'll take the points. It's incomplete. There's a lot of traffic around him. He was open by about a half a yard or a yard, but unable to hang on to the ball. It's going to be fourth and 11. And Navy looking to take a two-score lead. So the kicking team is on the field. They'll try for three. Kick is up and good, and it's a 10-point midshipman lead here as there's not that much time remaining. Marshall's going to get the football, but if they're going to have any hope of making a ball game out of this, 
They need to start doing it now against a game Navy defense. And it sails out of the end zone for a touchback. Going to be first and 10 for Marshall at their own 25. 616 remaining in the football game. Well, the guys are chomping at the bit down there, waiting for the game to start back up. They run a bubble screen. Johnson picks up good yardage. It's a 20 yard gain on the first play of the drive. He's over 100 yards on three catches, most of it coming on the second play of the football game. This guy right now clearly is the go to guy for this offense. Morrow out to the left flat this time, and Brown picks up nine. Eddie Brown on a 10-yard pass. Receptions-wise, he's actually the leading receiver for the Thundering Herd. Up the gut they go to Alan Smith. He picks up seven in the first. Fresh set of downs just inside the six-minute mark. Marshall continues with their no-huddle attack. Over the middle, Morrill finds Mitchell. Just inside six minutes, Marshall inside the 15-yard line. Pistol set this time. Handoff up the gut. Navy defense ready for it. Going to be second and 11. Despite a loss of yardage, Marshall stays with a no huddle. Over the middle, they go to Brown, but he had to come back for it. He was running back to the line of scrimmage when he caught it. He was unable to turn around. It's going to account for a loss of two on the completion. Not going to be third and long. Marshall with a single back set here on third and 13. They go underneath. It's an incompletion. And with 5.07, trailing by 10, you expect a field goal attempt here. That is indeed what the Thundering Herd is showing. With the ball at the 15, a very makeable kick, although their kicker's already missed twice. Fourth down. They'll call on the field goal unit here. And they can make this a one possession game with this kick right here. This time it's good. You know, they'd love to have the other two and be down, be down by one, but instead they missed them. And that means that Navy is ahead by seven, and they're about to get the football back. You best believe that Navy will be milking the clock, holding the lead here in the fourth quarter, just five minutes remaining. Maybe taking over at their own 17, 18 yard line, right in between the two. Back to the eye tight they go. But I don't think they called it once in the third quarter. But now with the lead in the fourth, they go up the gut to Bright. And he picks up four, going to be second and six. Navy stays with the eye tight. Letting the clock melt down. Cut. 
Hayes fakes the handoff up the gut. Goes to the right side and Amir Lee on the catch. It's a 15 yard gain to the tight end. And with 4.15 left, it's another first down for Navy. More time off the clock. From their own 37-yard line, where the ball rests on the right hash. Navy with the football ahead by seven. Flex bone set. Four down lineman for the herd. Man in motion. It's the triple option to the right side. They give it up the gut to Scott. He picks up four on first down. Going to be second and six, and that clock continues to move. Three and a half to go. Triple option to the left side. Hayes makes the pitch. And it's good for the first down to Wesley Green as he picks up 10. Fresh set of downs, just a little bit over three minutes remaining. The ball just inside Marshall territory, but more importantly, a fresh set of downs to take more time off the clock. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 49 yard line. Up the gut to Bright. He's got the first down easily. And now Navy just on the outskirts of field goal range, ahead by one score. With the football, inside of three minutes, Marshall's going to have to start thinking about calling timeouts. We're getting to, as Sir Alex Ferguson used to say, squeaky bum time. Read option, Hayes on the keeper. They bit hard on the halfback. Hayes keeps it for eight, and now the first timeout is used by the Thundering Herd. But Marshall running out of opportunities here as Navy with the ball at the 28 is already in field goal range. All they have to do is to continue to take time off the clock and not turn the ball over. Continuing with safe play calling. Up the gut they go. It's good for the first down to Green. Almost to the 20. That's the second time out by Marshall. 2.04 remaining. Navy comes out in the shotgun wide trips. Marshall responds with four down linemen. They give it up the gut to Bright. Joe Bright picks up six, and that's the third and final timeout by the Thundering Herd. The ball at the 16-yard line. Navy well in field goal range, ahead by seven.
Read option again. Hayes again keeps it. He's got another first down on an eight yard gain and they're inside the 10 yard line at about the seven. We'll call it the eight. It's a short eight. And the clock will now move once again. Marshall out of timeouts. First down and they've got their eyes on that goal line. Less than two minutes in the fourth quarter. Shotgun normal, halfback week. Five down linemen for the herd. Touchdown, Navy. They take a two-score lead just inside the two-minute mark. 127 remaining. And Navy about to take a 14-point lead. Shipman ready to kick off. There's 87 seconds remaining in this football game. Deep into the end zone it goes. It's going to be a touchback, and the Thundering Herd will take over at their own 25, trailing by two scores with their backup quarterback at the helm. Morrill going deep, caught on the sideline. It's a big gain, 43 yards to Willie Johnson. They're going to go to no huddle with a 120 remaining. Deep again, and it's deflected by Carrick Jones. That'll stop the clock with 73 seconds remaining. Second and 10. Ball on the 32. Second down, 10 yards to go. Back to pass goes Morrill looking. Finds his man. He's tackled short. That's going to keep the clock moving. Into the back corner of the end zone to Willie Johnson. Marshall scores quickly, but they're going to need to recover the onside kick here. They're still in desperation mode despite the score. And now the play of the game forthcoming. The onside kick attempt by the Thundering Herd. This will decide this football game. It's recovered by Navy. Wright holds on to it. And that should do it, folks. Navy ahead by seven with the football and no timeouts. They should be able to take knees and hop on the buses. Hop back over to Jaeger Airport and get out of town with their first conference victory of the season. 24 to 7, the outcome of this one. Both teams suffering decently sized injuries. Both teams having backups respond. And the result is going to be a seven point Navy victory. It's going to be, as I said, their first conference win in their first conference game they're going to be one and zero in the american conference one and two on the year
Victory formation. Every quarterback's favorite play as Hayes takes the knee. And Navy moves to 1-0 in the American Conference with a 24-17 victory over the Marshall Thundering Herd. They pick up their first road win of the season. A seven-point victory here in Huntington, West Virginia. 27 to 4, 27 to 7, sorry, 24 to 17, the final score. We'll take a quick look at some team stats and then give you an insight into next week's games. Hayes, the player of the game, picking up a couple of scores on the ground with his legs on read options and 14 out of 18 passing. Early on, Marshall scored on that big play, the big slant pass, where Johnson broke it, broke it open. But after that, Navy slowly but surely took control of the football game and edge out the Marshall Thundering Herd, 24 to 17, the final score. Morrill did his best to rebound for the Thundering Herd on offense, but it just wasn't enough as the Navy defense holds Marshall to 17 points and comes away with a seven-point win. Navy moves to one and two on the season. You see there's some team stats 21 to 15 in first downs, and Marshall, while outgaining Navy by a fair bit, did have the two turnovers. Navy winning the turnover battle 2 to 0 was a big difference. That overcame their deficit in third down percentage, it overcame their deficit in yards. Navy played smart. Marshall took a couple of risks that maybe they shouldn't have, and it results in a 24 to 17 victory by the midshipmen. Malcolm Perry injured briefly. We'll see if he comes back next week. That'll be an interesting storyline for week five. Yeah, well, he makes a difference. He's really good. Not that bright and green aren't bad, aren't bad they're just not as good. Yeah. For week five action in League One, for your Navy Midshipmen and your Syracuse Orange, what do we have in store? We'll tell you. For week five, number two Syracuse will travel to Atlanta to the band box in downtown Hotlanta to face off against the option Georgia Tech offense, while Navy travels home to face off against what we know to be, will be a 2-2 two and two Temple team following their loss this week. Navy looking to go to 2-2 two and 2-0 two and two and oh in the conference in that football game. Both teams in close proximity between Philadelphia and Annapolis. We thank you for joining us for this exciting doubleheader with a user game followed by a conference game. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you have an excellent weekend. We hope you have an excellent next week. Kick its ass.